But having a dog first aid kit and knowing how to use it can definitely save your dog's life. Now this was put to the test about two months ago for me when my dog Nova stood on something sharp. I'm not sure what it was. I noticed that she was licking her front leg and when I went to go and see her blood was just pouring out. I mean it was like a horror film. It was literally spurting out, just flowing down and pooling beneath her. Fortunately, I did have a first aid kit and also fortunately, I'd done a dog first aid course a couple of months previously and I managed to save her. It turns out she'd severed two arteries and a tendon and we were about a kilometre from home. Not a big adventure, just an everyday dog walk. So for that reason, I always carry a first aid kit on every dog walk. It doesn't have to be a big adventure. You spend most of your time, you know, not far from your house. So the likelihood is, that's when you're going to have an accident. So I have an everyday kit that I carry with me for an everyday walk when I'm no more than a couple of hours away from the house. Okay, so this is my everyday first aid kit for the dog. Um, this particular pack is from Kergo. And it's a really nice pack actually, it's just the right size that I can take this, I can put this on my belt, actually I've got like a utility sling that I wear, um, and then it's immediately to hand, I don't have to go searching through the bottom of a bag, um, I can, you know, it's on my hip, and this was actually really essential when Nova had hair accident, because it meant everything was right there where I needed it. Um, it's a small pack, it is small enough to carry every day, but I did save my dog's life with this kit, so it's actually a really good kit to have. Now, since Noah's accident, I have changed the pack a little bit. I've added a few things, and I'll talk about that. Um, and I'll also talk about if, you, if you've got to make your own kit up, what things you, you can probably leave out as well because you don't you don't need everything. So let's get into the kit. Okay, so let's open this up. And what I like about this pack is, you know, you've got these little elastic loops, so everything that you need in an emergency you can have close to hand. Um, and you should organise your first, first day kit that way so that the stuff you might need as a priority you can get to very quickly. Now, for me, one of the things I added, which I realised I should really have, is a tourniquet. Now, a tourniquet is used to apply pressure above the wound and actually not cuts off the circulation, but it slows the circulation right down uh, and could stop the bleeding a lot. Now, I really wish I had one of these when Nova had her accident because she had a horrific bleed. Because uh, it was two arteries and it was just, it was like a horror film. So these are great, they're a couple of quid each. It's elastic, so it, it's really easy to use. There's a loop there, you just put that over the leg, above the wound, and then you pull this side and this ratchets. Uh, and then it just maintains that pressure and sort of slows that bleeding down. If you're using a tourniquet, one thing you need to be aware of is for every 10 minutes the tourniquet is on, it, you, you need to take it off for a minute. And that's just to allow the, the blood to keep circulating, otherwise it can cause problems for that limb. That said, if you had to choose between saving your dog's life because it was bleeding out or potentially losing a limb, I know what my decision would be. So yeah, carry one, but know how to use it. Re really good bit of kit. Uh, the things I used the most when I had the accident were, were these, which are the uh, sort of the large gauze dressings. Um, the smaller ones here were, were quite useful, uh, but the cut was, was fairly big. And what I also found was trying to apply a small dressing to a, to a cut when the dog isn't necessarily being cooperative is quite hard and actually use a bigger dressing and this one is, is 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter it's a bit easier because there's more margin for error more, more margin for error you can just get it slap it on to that wound when they're struggling and, and you're more likely to hit the target so really really good i have three in here and i actually used all three when my dog has an accident so really good bit of kit Load hair dressing, dead cheap, 30p, you can get them for. Um, so if you use one, just replace it straight away, because you might need it. Um, the other things you might need quickly and, and to hand are the bandages. So there's this type of bandage, and this is this is kind of one of the types I used with Nova. And this is just a fixing bandage or, or a conforming bandage. And it's just there to wrap these these dressings over the top. So this, so this wraps, wraps the dressing over the top. It works. What I did find with these conforming bandages is they don't apply enough pressure to stop bleeding. They will hold the dressing in place, but in terms of stopping bleeding, they're not too good. Um, one thing that is useful, and I think the one came in the pack and I've certainly got one in there now, is a crepe bandage. The crepe bandage is good for applying pressure, um, and that is ultimately what stopped the bleeding with Nova. Um, 
or to, to go to the vets anyway. Um, but also you could use this to, if you needed to, to, to kind of give support if they kind of sprain their, sprain their paw or something as well. So give support and applies pressure, really good bit of kit worth having. Uh, one thing I learned and I've added since is this, which is a, an ambulance dressing. The ambulance dressing is a good bit of kit because it's a bandage and a dressing in one. And what I found was trying to hold the dressing in place while Nova was struggling uh, and get the bandage on was quite tough. So actually having a dressing and a bandage you want should hopefully make it easier should that ever happen again. So that's, what, that's why I've added that. Um, there's some other bits and bobs that came with the kit. So there's a bit of string here. Now the string I assume is there to act as a temporary muzzle if you needed to. Um, it's not the most comfy way of doing a muzzle. You can use another conforming bandage to make a muzzle which would be more comfortable for the dog. But you know you might need that for, for an emergency. So it's a useful bit of kit to have. I, I guess you could make a temporary lead as well if you had to out of that. Um, the other things it came with are these like little packs of wipes, scissors. Now for me, I'm not too fussed about the wipes and things because what I want from a first aid kit, and this, this has changed since, since Nova's accident is, what I need from the kit is enough stuff to get them home should they have an accident. Um, if it's just a wipe or a pair of tweezers or you know little tick twists which, which I've added to the kit, that can't wait till I get home because ticks what tick 48 hours before there's a problem so that is an essential for, for an everyday you know walking kit for an hour or so a couple of hours I wouldn't even worry about those they can stay in your kit at home uh, what I really need are dressings bandages that's kind of what you need um, also with the pack are is a space belt is a space blanket and yeah a space blanket could be useful if you've got somebody who's coming to pick you up uh, but what you've got to remember is in most cases with a dog you quite often got a self-rescue so you're not going to be staying in place trying to keep warm you're going to be trying to pick them up and carry them or whatever uh, but potentially useful if you come across a civilian or you know a dog walker who just needs help uh, you could use that to help keep them warm so worth having but I wouldn't worry too much about it but another thing in my pack are disposable gloves now I found when I was dealing with Nova I didn't even think about disposable gloves because she was bleeding it was serious so I just got stuck in and it was only actually when I got to the vets afterwards and the, you know she was she was being seen by the vet and they managed to sort of stop her arteries from bleeding that um, the vets came up to me and said you know do you want to use our sink and clean up because I was just covered it'd be like, it was like it was at a murder scene I was just literally my clothes were covered my hands were covered everything um, so I didn't 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 use those uh, at all However, you know, if you're out walking and you see you know, another dog walker who's had an accident or another person, you know, they would offer you some protection and the other person some protection. If it was not life threatening, you just needed to uh, protect yourself. You know, you, you had time. Yeah, they're useful to have. Um, another thing I've added to the kit is this. So these are uh, Q-tips. Now you do get a couple of Q-tips with a pack, just the regular standard ones. But what I've added is this type. Now these are filled with like a styptic liquid which is designed to stop bleeding so if your dog tears a nail or something like that then you just break this little end here with the red strip uh, and then the liquid flows down into the q-tip and then you can use that to sort of stop any minor bleeding so useful useful for a nail useful for a min minor cut uh, apparently soothing as well so i've got them there because they could be useful probably not a life-threatening thing but yeah it's useful because nails bleed so yeah that, that's worth having um, other things in the pack now this came with the pack and if I'm honest I'm not too fussed about this at all this is an ice pack now yes you know if you've got a strain or a, a sprain should I say uh, you know applying cold and you know rest and compression is the best way of dealing with it in reality um, that can wait till you get home and I know you should pipe up do cold as, as soon as possible but if it came to a choice between an ice pack and having the, the dressings and the bandages, dressings and bandages every time for me because having a sprain is not life threatening, bleeding to death is. It's as simple as that. So useful, but I'm not that fussed about it. It does add a little bit of weight as well, um, but it's not too bad that, that, that I, I would leave it at home. But if you were worried about weight, leave that at home, but do take, do take your dressings. Um, and that, that's pretty much my, my pack. Now the key thing to remember about this pack is this is just for you know an everyday dog walk so we're talking about a couple of hours or so uh, if i was going longer like a couple of days i would use one of my expedition packs um, i'll go through those in another video 
but this is just my everyday carry you know normal couple of hours walk this is enough to save your dog's life so there's no reason why, why you shouldn't have it so think carefully what you put in your everyday first aid kit you don't need to have the kitchen sink in there and it's absolutely key that it's small enough that you carry every day that's the whole purpose of it you know as long as you can get them to your car where you've got another kit back to home where you've got another kit or to a vet that's all you need from your everyday kit don't overburden it with additional things you don't need make sure you carry it every day and keep it small and light enough that it doesn't uh, stop you from doing that so that was my dog everyday carry first aid kit so do me a favor in the comments let me know what you carry in your kits or if you carry one at all and also let me know what incidents you've had to deal with with my two adventurous they are i'm sure i'm gonna have to deal with it at some point and one thing i've learned about first aid is thinking about things in advance and planning for them is half the battle if you've got that preparation you're more likely to be able to deal with it and another tip if you do have to deal with some kind of traumatic injury like i had to with nova don't be worried about being traumatized afterwards I know for weeks and weeks after Nova had her accident, I was quite scared about letting the dogs off. And it probably took me about a month before I could bring myself to let the dogs off again. Because I just wasn't ready or mentally ready or prepared to go through that again. And every time I came into the woods, especially when I got near that spot, I started to feel myself getting anxious and nervous. So if you feel you need to talk to somebody, you know, don't be afraid of doing that. It's not weak. It's not wrong. Um, dealing with a traumatic injury is traumatic to yourself as well. And they do say the first aider is quite often another ax another sort of victim of a first aid incident. So yeah, don't be afraid about getting help. It's a horrible thing to happen to you. It's a horrible thing to happen to your dog. And sometimes it just takes time to recover. Our mental first aid is probably just as important as physical once we've dealt with the you know, initial dangers. So yeah, don't let that slip. Make sure you keep on top of it and look after yourselves.